Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy. I'm Jason Glaze, better known as Van Gogh. And you might have heard we set a new world record of 18 mini quads in the air in a single race, and we did it at the Multi GP Championship in Muncie, Indiana. And 16 of those were running standard 5.8 gigahertz analog video links. So Jason and I want to show you not only how we did it, but how you can do it at your own home track. It all comes down to two ratios, axial ratio and the pilot separation ratio. The key component is for all pilots to have antennas that have an axial ratio of 0.6 or greater. Axial ratio refers to the purity of the circular wave generated by the antenna system. All antennas exert both right hand and left hand components. The greater the dominant component, the higher the axial ratio. In this graphic, we see the radiation plot of a cyclone antenna. As you can see, the antenna exerts both right hand and left hand components, but the right hand is significantly stronger. This means that the antenna will transmit and receive right hand signals 18 to 21 times stronger than left hand signals. In these two charts here, you see the antennas we've tried, the ones that work, as well as the ones that don't work at all. As you can see, despite the fact that we actually manufacture the cloverleaf and the skew planer wheel, they still don't work as they don't have a high enough axial ratio. The way to utilize axial ratio is to alternate rotation between pilots on adjacent channels to reduce the strength of interfering signals by other pilots. For example, if one pilot is transmitting right hand at 200 milliwatts, that signal will be transmitted at 188 milliwatts right hand and only 12 milliwatts on left hand. Therefore, if the pilots on adjacent channels use left hand, they will only receive that signal at the 12 milliwatt signal strength, while the intended receiver will receive it at 188 milliwatts. This means significantly less interference from other pilots on the track. This table shows the channels and the rotations for minimal interference. You can see that bands A and E are used and no special channels are needed. This separation and the reverse rotation also minimizes the effect of intermodulation distortion. So how do you find the axial ratio? A manufacturer who tests their equipment should have the axial ratio published. And you're going to need a separation of at least 12 dB in the dominant direction. So that means 12 dB more dominant than recessive. This is an axial ratio of 0.6 or greater. And if they don't have this published, you can look at their radiation plot. The other key component to success is a pilot separation ratio of 3 to 1. That is, the pilots must be placed at least a third of the distance away from the track as the track is long. So if your track is 85 yards deep, you would want to place the pilots about 28 yards from the edge of the track. This reason is to keep the receiver from overloading with a competing signal. Pilots are often incorrectly placed in the middle of the long section of the track. While this might be convenient, you often get situations where a competitor's quad is flying near the pilot stations and your quad is at the far end of the track. Here we can see the competitor's quad is only 5 yards away. Your quad is at the corner of the track 50 yards away. Thus your competitor's signal is 12 and a half times closer than yours. This overloads the front end of the receiver, wiping out your video. However, if we place the pilots back from the track, the competitor's quad is only 4 times the distance away from your own. While still much closer, when utilizing circular polarized antennas, the competitor signal will come in significantly weaker. You will see we are placing our pilots along the short end of the track instead of the long one. This allows pilots to utilize a directional antenna that covers the entire field. While not required, directional antennas give significantly better signal than omnidirectional antennas, and thus the video feed is often much cleaner. Just like the transmitter antenna, the receiver antenna must also have an axial ratio of 0.6 or higher, or the user will have interference from other signals from other pilots flying. I find that the best antenna is the crosshair antenna. However, for a less expensive solution, a three-turn or a five-turn helical antenna also works very well. It should go without saying that transmitter power and transmitter bandwidth are also extremely important. Transmitter power should be limited to 200 milliwatts at most and should be the same between all pilots. 
And the other thing is, is 25 milliwatts is more than enough, especially when using a directional antenna. In fact, it usually has a 4x safety factor or even more on only 25 milliwatts. And as far as bandwidth goes, we need to keep the bandwidth down to about 9 megahertz. This is why it's important to ground your audio, otherwise your bandwidth can increase significantly. And that's no good for anyone. No. So following these simple guidelines of axial ratio and pilot separation ratio, we can get up to 16 pilots in the air racing at the same time. And you know what that means, right? That means more flying and less sitting around and more battery packs at every event. So go out and try it. 16 pilots at once. It's awesome. Okay. And as always, keep, keep them flying. flying. It should go without saying that transmitter power and bandwidth are also very important. You know, all the pilots...